Okay, let's go. Now, heaven is, is, is an invitation that nobody, nobody in his right state of mind would, would ever say, no, I don't want to go, no thanks. But in my case, uh, by the way, this is uh, conversations with God, okay? Talking to God. My case is different. I don't, I've been thinking about it for a long time, and I don't, I don't know, I, I don't really want to spend time uh, with God uh, in heaven. I mean, for eternity. It's, 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 it's a decision that uh, I have already made, and, and it really breaks my heart. Because uh, I read the Bible, I, I know my Bible, and for some reason Jesus, the Son of God, he claimed to be the Son of God, it is not somebody that I feel related to. It's not somebody that I want to spend time with. It's not somebody that uh, I, will, I would like to receive orders, commands in heaven when it comes to working in heaven, uh, uh, pursuing a, a goal, developing a task. Because it seems like there's some, uh, some task, okay? some homework that you have to uh, perform in heaven. For some reasons, some people get assigned some uh, more responsibilities than others, okay, according to whatever happened on planet Earth, okay, that I do not understand as much as I read my Bible. You don't, you never know how God is going to compensate you, okay? You believe you know, but in reality, you don't know, okay? How is, uh, uh, how does uh, uh, God uh, work comp compensation plan uh, really works, okay? We don't know, we don't know. So, in my case, it's like I'm, I'm rejecting an invitation for eternity to spend time with God for eternity. All right, the, the, the problem is that uh, in my case, is if you don't go to heaven, where do you go to? I don't want to go to hell. I, I have to admit it, okay? I'm a salesperson, and sometimes you have to make a decision where you're closing the deal, you're going to lose some money, you're going to uh, uh, just, like people say in the, in, in the car business, you're, you're just going to put a vehicle on the road, so you're, you're not going to make any money. Uh, or you're just going to lose money when you're closing the deal, you know for a fact you're going to lose money. In my case, when it comes to uh, rejecting my invitation to heaven, I don't know what is going to happen, because I don't know what's, what's beyond, you know? I don't know. According to Romans uh, 10, 9, if you accept, uh, if you repent and you accept Jesus in your heart, you're a new creature. You're, you're going to be safe. And according to John 15, 13, 14, and 15 as well, uh, Jesus claims to be your friend. Uh, but there is a condition if you obey him. Well, it's not that easy obeying Jesus, okay? It's not that easy. So, I'm, I'm, I know you're listening to me. You're a Christian man. You're a Christian lady. And you're having a hard time obeying Jesus, okay? And I understand. I, 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 I've got empathy for you because I'm, I'm, I'm just living the, the very same uh, uh, Christian life. It's not easy being a Christian. But my problem is, is it, it's a whole different story. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to be with him. I'm rejecting him. Now, the problem is that that might be the sin, the unfor unforgivable sin, the sin against the, the Holy Spirit. Is that the one that uh, people talk about? I don't know. If you're rejecting him, you're telling him, I don't want you in my life. I want you far away from me nothing about you I agree with or, or if I agree with your uh, work I just don't want to be part of you I don't want to be part of your team I reject you I don't want you I don't want you it's like a, when you're dealing with a beautiful lady beautiful woman and for some reason you, you have the chance to uh, let's say spend time with her at a dinner or, or, or at a party at a business, a business gathering, whatever, whatever. Whichever situation you might be dealing with. And she might be 
gorgeous. She might be extremely, extremely beautiful, superb. But for some reason, you don't want to spend time with her. There's nothing about her that gets your attention. I mean, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? Okay, I go to heaven. I get to go to heaven. And then what? What's in it for me? What's going to happen to my soul? Am I, am I going to enjoy being in heaven? Is there going to be competition just like it is uh, we, we've got on planet Earth? Would I have to survive again? Okay, let's suppose that nothing of that nature happens, okay? That there's no sickness. There's no crying. There's no uh, uh, hunger. Okay, I understand. Okay. Well, I don't want to be there. I like waking up every single day of my life and, and being a, a, on a, a surviving mood. I don't know what, what is your understanding of the Bible, but my understanding is, might be different to yours, okay? This is, this is mine. Uh, I always see whatever uh, situation, uh, phenomenon that I come across to, I always see what is the message, what is the purpose, what is the goal, what is, what is the objective, what is, what is it that he is aiming for. And when it comes to Jesus, he came, in my, in my opinion, he came for two reasons. The first one has to be with obedience. He came to obey his dad, okay, his father. That was the first reason. He came, he came in, in obedience, okay, in obedience, okay. But there was a second reason. And it was not to preach the gospel. It was not to heal people. It was not to uh, cast out demons. It was not to baptize people. It was not to claim the born again concept. It, it, it was not about being born again. Jesus came for a different reason. Jesus, he was selling a product. Keep in mind, I'm a, I'm a salesperson, okay? He was selling a product. And his market at that time was Judea. Okay? He was selling a product. If you read the Bible, if you read the Bible, he's talking about a government. He's talking about a one single product. He was selling the kingdom of God. He was selling the kingdom of God. And then he said, that it's already in you. And it, what gets my attention is that John the Baptist claimed that the kingdom of the kingdom of God was near. That it was about to happen. So when Jesus came, he brought in with him the kingdom of God. If you pray like Jesus taught us to pray. I, I don't pray in English, okay? Así en la tierra como en el cielo, just like on planet Earth, like in, in heaven. I don't know how to say that in English, okay? But he is claiming that uh, there, is a, there is a sort of a symbiosis between heaven and Earth. So whatever happens in heaven, not could, but can happen on planet Earth. Because the kingdom of God is already with us. That was his main message, the kingdom of God. And he talked that, uh, he said that uh, it was about planting a seed that eventually is going to grow underneath the Earth and then it's going to become a huge tree with huge branches and even the birds are gonna multiply on those branches. So he was talking about multiplication. So there you go, the businessman. And, and then uh, a lot of parables that I, I don't wanna explain today in this video. But uh, gets my, what really gets my attention is that the kingdom of God it's like an investment that you make. Uh, that gentleman that found a, 
found a treasure, went to the bank, got all of his money and bought the land. Bought the land because he wanted to keep the treasure for just for himself. Okay? So the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. It's like you finally finally you find what has been lost forever finally you find the truth the truth Jesus claimed to be el camino la verdad y la vida John 14 6 the way the truth and the life and nobody nobody gets to the father but through me nadie llega al padre si no es por mí so he claimed to be sort of a, a gate a gate if he is a gate then he is sort of a country club and I am I'm, I'm totally against country clubs I don't like country clubs I don't I don't like those gatherings where only special people get together keep in mind that Jesus only chose 12 apost apostles only 12 and one of them betrayed him so Jesus is like a selective guy. He likes to deal with people he he has fun with. He likes to deal with people that like him. In my case, I don't like him. I like his word. It's a beautiful message, okay? Let's agree. It's a beautiful message, beautiful message. If you read the four, the four gospels, I know my Bible, so I know what I'm saying. I, I read my Bible every single day of my life. So, it's a beautiful message, but I don't want to be part of uh, uh, his message. He, he's, he, he claimed that he was preparing a mansion for us. I don't want to live in a mansion. I'm happy with my place. What? I'm going to die some, someday. And then, where am I going to? I don't know. I don't know. But I don't want to live in a mansion. I do not want to live in a mansion. He claims that he's preparing a mansion for us. He claims, this is what he said, okay? That he's gonna sign some responsibilities to the people who get uh, safe, like, like the governments of cities. I don't wanna govern the city. I don't wanna ma manage the city. So it seems like uh, there, what he is offering me is not what I want. What, he, what Jesus is selling me is not the product or the service that I'm looking for. I'm not, in, I'm not in the market for what Jesus is selling. So we've got a problem. We've got a serious problem. Okay? I'm not in the market. I'm, I'm just, I don't happen to be in the market. He's selling a product that I, I don't want to buy it. I don't want to, I mean, I'm going to give you an example. I'm into pickup trucks. I, I've got a four ranger, okay? Jesus is offering me, okay, a 150 four range, uh, a 150, a four 150. The, the, most the most beautiful one. I don't want it. I don't want it. That is not gonna make me happy. That is not gonna make me happy. So the problem is that he created the word with his mouth. He is the word of God in the beginning. That's the way the Genesis starts off, and that's the way the Gospel of John start off, starts off, okay? In the beginning, the word of God, and he was the word. He owns everything. He owns my life. But not because he owns my life, I choose to spend to spend eternity with him. I don't want to spend eternity with him. And it's not that I'm lost. I'm not lost. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I might be much better, better than you at this time. I've got everything that life can offer to you, including good health. Knock on wood, you never know how, how you're gonna wake up tomorrow, okay? You never know. A stage three, four, lung cancer or brain cancer or whatever. 
you never know but I'm in good health okay I'm good I'm good I'm very grateful I, and I know he owns my life but not not because he is the owner of my life that means that I want to spend eternity with him no not a chance not a chance not a chance no I'm, I'm sorry but not me not me I've got a lot of stuff to share with you regarding these conversations with God. I talk to him all day long, okay? At all times. I pray. We pray, we talk together. We share staff. Not that I hear the, the audible vo voice of God, but you know that God is talking to you. He's going to give you wisdom, okay? But the wisdom that he has given to me, it's a whole different story. It has nothing to do with the desire that he might have for me, okay? For my life. I don't know if I'm, I'm going to change my mind. I might change my mind. Maybe he's going to change my mind. But at this time, I, I just choose not to spend eternity with him. And... What is very sad is, I don't know what is expecting me. I don't know what's, what lies ahead of me. It's very sad. I know it's, it is very sad. But I talk to God every single day, in prayer. I don't believe in meditating, okay? That's for uh, oogie oogie, ooga ooga. New age people, that's not for me. What kind of Christian am I? I don't have the answer. I don't have the answer. All I know is that uh, I don't want to be with him. Do I love uh, Jesus? I'm, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful. Do I love him? He asks, he asks Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? And Peter got angry at him. That might be the, the reason. That might be the reason. I, I'm, I'm angry at God. Maybe that is the reason. I'm angry at God because I don't want to be with him. I don't like who he is, who he represents. I don't like him. But I recognize that He is my Creator and your Creator and the Creator of everything. I'll be back. This is South Beach, okay? South Beach, Florida. Bye-bye.